And welcome to Six Questions from the Internet with Kate Campbell for August of 2019. How you feeling, Kate? Good. Good. This is the month you'll be in Ireland. <gasps> yes, I will. And it's the greenest <laughs> green you'll ever see. <laughs> oh, I love Ireland and the people. I'm going to be August. looking. Well, there'll be some photos from this trip. Probably. Oh, you know, yeah. I usually send some, you know. Some dispatches. Some dispatches, usually. All right, well, let's get to these burning questions from the internet. First question is from Carrie Leeper Brock. Another great, that's a great mm-hmm. name. Uh, who was your favorite professor at Sanford University in Birmingham, Alabama? This is where you did your undergraduate work. It's true. <laughs> uh, wow. Well, let me just say that um, I started out as a music theory and comp major, for those of you who want to know. <laughs> They do. They want to know real bad. <laughs> and uh, I really liked, I liked almost all of my professors, to be honest with you. I mean, but, you know, I was I was in the composition part and uh, had a couple of really, and then the, uh, I had a very unique um, professor whose name was Erwin Ray, who was uh, taught conducting, but also led the university crowd. And he, well, you know, music people, we're all a little different. Mm-hmm. But I liked him a lot. Uh, Tim Banks was a marvelous teacher as well uh, in the music department when I started out there. and um, But then I switched to history. And, uh, wow, uh, I have to say that uh, Marlene Reichert um, was a, one of the history professors. And... Uh, she and another was Jim Brown. And those of you now, almost everybody, I think, has retired now. But they really took me in. I mean, I always loved history. And when I decided to switch, when I realized that I could be out in four years and like I only had to didn't have to get up at eight o'clock and take theory, whatever. <laughs> I was like, what? Other people, <laughs> other people like, you know, just like take one class a day, Monday, Wednesday. I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> so I was just like out of music into into liberal arts. But the history department really uh, took to me, encouraged me, all of the professors there. But um, uh, Jim Brown, Marlene Reichert, and, and um, well, really all of them at that point. But I had no idea what I was going to do. And uh, Dr. Reichert, I don't know if it was Dr. Reichert who said this to me, said, well, you know, have you thought about going to graduate school? Uh, We think we can get you a teaching assistantship at Auburn. And uh, Wayne Flint, who had taught at Samford, had gone to Samford, was the chair of the history department. And I go, sure, what's a teaching assistantship? (laughs) You know, and get my master's at Auburn, and it was uh, it, so it was it was the folks in the history department. But you know, history was a, really a way for me to again begin. I didn't know there was such a thing as Southern history, really, as a separate thing, or the New South, the South since the Civil War, which became my um, my main focus. Uh, I didn't know any of that. You know, I, I think we don't realize how much we don't know when we go to college. Mm-hmm. I mean, even from the, in the music department, you know, it changed my life. They said go to Auburn, and and then uh, and then uh, Wayne was running the history department and really took me under his wing, and and it was further away for me to have this ongoing conversation, which and obviously I wrote papers and did all that at, at, at school, but um, that really finally in the end led me to beginning to write the way people know me now. I realized. I think I'm a late bloomer in that sense uh, because of my professors and my experience at Sanford. And then Auburn, um, music had been a way for me to have a conversation uh, with my people. And it started when I was, you know, five years old, but that I really began to understand it. And that was the greatest thing for me. So I don't know if that answers the question, but everybody, I feel very, so very fortunate from the music department to, uh, the funny thing is I basically have as many hours, if anybody who's ever been a music major in music as I do in history, but the music is like the minor, but you know, if you're a music major, it's, it's, it's nonstop. The other thing is I never practiced for my juries. Because every time I would go to the practice room, you know, I was supposed to be doing scales and stuff for the piano, I would write songs because that's what I'd been doing 
since I was a little girl. Yeah. So that's what I did. So I wasn't very good. <laughs> As usual, even today, I don't really practice very good. I'm not a good practicer. I'm like, no, I'm, I think I'm going to rather write the song than yeah. I can practice later. <laughs> well, I mean, you are actually playing the instrument as you're doing it. Yeah, I am. I am. But it's not the same as playing those scales. No, you should go back and play those scales. Have some discipline. <laughs> Continuing with the college thing, mm-hmm. Barbara Vandergriff wants to know, what is your favorite memory from college? Well, there's so many and many I can't tell. Oh. No. Uh, wow. I don't know. I, I just, I, you know, but I loved school from the day I went to first grade. All the way through college. Oh, I loved going to school. So there were many. <laughs> I mean, I have to think about it. You know, the people I met, I, many I still know today, and some I still know, you know, from elementary school here in Nashville. So, wow. I don't know. I don't know what, but I know Barbara. I'm trying to, I wonder what she's trying to get at. Tell her, I don't know what you're getting at. I don't know. I just had so many. It was a fun time all the way around. Well, Barbara, come back and maybe get more specific. See if she wants to know. Yeah, what do you want to know? Right. Cut to the chase. That's right. I can if, handle it. Yes, yeah, she can handle it. And if she doesn't want, if Kate doesn't want to answer it, she'll just plead the fifth. Right. She reserves the right. Right. Only the people who were at that party will know. <laughs> Marsha Evans asks, uh-huh. I want to hear about Delmas Jackson. Who in your life inspired that song? Well, he did. That's a real person. Delmas Jackson. Yeah. I don't know if she's heard Was me. a custodian. Was a custodian. That song is word for word. Mr. Jackson. Delmas Jackson. He was the custodian at the church in Nashville when we moved to Nashville from Sledge, Mississippi. I was five years old. And... Uh, I'm the oldest, um, so I, then I had a brother and sister, and I went to, this is when Nashville, they didn't quite have, you know, public kindergartens yet. They ha- they were beginning to have public school kindergartens, but they didn't, so there's a lot of church kindergartens. So uh, the little church that my dad pastored didn't have the kindergarten, but the one down the road did. So my mother uh, would take me to kindergarten, and then she'd pick me up, and then she'd take me back down to my dad's church. Uh, and I hung out at the church because, again, like I said, by then I had a little brother and sister. And so my mom would go, well, this was great for me because I did whatever I wanted. Again, my dad paid no attention to me. It was just like writing sermons or whatever. So, uh, But there was a the custodian and his wife uh, were at the church. And so uh, Mr. Jackson, I, what I remember about him is he wore a uh, starched white shirt, starched overalls shiny shoes and he also had kind of like a bear bright hat i vaguely remember to me it was a bear bright i mean i wouldn't call it a bear bright hat then but y'all know what i'm talking about but um so we would often i mean he would you know he always knew where i was in the church and i'm sure i'd follow him around some and then and then sometimes we'd have lunch you know i can remember sitting on the stairs and looking out the window and we'd have lunch and he just talked to me like i was a real person you know and At a time when I didn't know it now, he wasn't obviously spoken to like he was a real person, I think, in the 1960s. But um, the uh, uh, so many years went by and um, at different times in my life, I would think about Mr. Jackson. And then Mr. Jackson passed away and my dad sent me. Uh, I think I liked his name too, even Ernst Delmas. I'm thinking, what kind of name is that? That's a cool name. Even when you're, you know, you're eight years old, that's pretty cool. Delmas Jackson. Of course, I couldn't call him Delmas. I had to call him Mr. Jackson. But um, he um, he passed away, and my dad was asked to, I think, speak at his service. And then my dad, after that, was going cleaning out one of his desks and he found or one of his files he found where my dad had written down some things he said at mr jackson's funeral and mr jackson was one of those people who could uh you know use phrases like i've cried enough tears over that woman to drown myself in you know those Mm old-fashioned that meemaw uh ira's grandmother was like that too she just knew all those phrases mr jackson was that way but um so my dad gave me that. But, you know, again, for years since I grew up and left, there were all these times I would think about Mr. Jackson. And I kept thinking, one day I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write a song about him. But I couldn't figure out how to do it. And one day, I think I was sitting, you know, 
because by the time I wrote it, I was probably mid thirties. Um, and uh, I was thinking about the Bible verse, "Well done, good and faithful servant." And then I thought, "Well done, Delmas Jackson." So that is my ear. See, here's the the singability of that. And so then I. I wrote the song and and just my remembrances and and different things like that. So if you come to the concerts, I tell another a uh, 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 story about that song too. But I don't know if I want to tell it now because it might ruin it. Yeah, the concerts. You gotta go. Yeah. KateCampbell.com dot com to see all those tour dates. Delmas is is real. That's his real name. All right, David Ombi wants to know what's your favorite Southern short story. Oh God, there's so many. That's just like a crazy, that's a crazy question. I What's will, your favorite one based on a woman in Mississippi? I mean, that revolves around a woman in Mississippi. Does that help narrow it down? No. No, because they're mostly, a lot of them are in Mississippi. All, well, and of course, I also change all kinds of places around. Okay. Uh, he's talking about a story, a, a story, a story that someone else has written. I think, yeah. Short, oh, yeah. Short, short story. Well, I love all of you, Doris. Um, you know, I love you, Dor. I love my three Southern women, the Trinity. <laughs> that would be Harper. <laughs> that would be Harper, Eudora, and Flannery. I have to tell you, and Flannery O'Connor is one of is she's boy, she's a different sort of person. They're all different in their own ways. Eudora's probably language wise, my the one I most relate to is Eudora Welltail. Just love, and you know, she's got there's so many of her stories. I just love every one of them as far as me reading. I love in every word, and she's got stuff about blue singers. I mean, everybody should just read. You sh- if you don't know Eudora Welltail, I mean, her books are great, uh, her novels are great too. The Optimist Starter, they're so you know, her language is thing, but anyway, I decided I needed to read when I'm go- was going through my Catholic stage. I decided I hadn't read Flannery O'Connor yet. So some of the, these, one of my most interesting stories that I like is at the end is more of, of Flannery's. I've got her collection of short stories. And I think the name of the story is called Parker's Back. It's a late story. I mean, people who are out there will listen. Parker's Back, like B-A-C-K. It's about a guy who gets a tattoo. Speaking of tattoos. Oh, yeah, we had that in an earlier episode. Yeah. So everybody should read Parker's Back. It's so odd. It's so, but it's, uh, I find it intriguing. I don't even know the thing about Flannery is I can't even, she's got so many different things that she brings into the stories and they're, they're difficult, but wow, the images are in, this is one of my favorite ones is Parker's Back. Parker's Back. Okay. Flannery O'Connor. Flannery O'Connor. I like to say Flannery's name like Lucinda Williams says it. Yeah. Flannery O'Connor. Flannery O'Connor. <laughs> I just like to talk like Lucinda Williams talks sometimes. <laughs> She's got Mississippi stuff in yeah. Arkansas and Texas. It's just there. all kind of in there raw, and it's she does a lot of raw. Yeah, raw. Yeah, right. I love. Oh my gosh, that's pretty good. I hope she doesn't hear you talking about her like that. Oh no! Well, I, well, I mean, I do the same thing about Reba. Like it's just if I oh, if gosh. I'm like She's, Reba's got that whole Oklahoma. Thing yeah, going. if I'm talking like you and like like doing your mannerisms, it means mm. I'm obsessed with you. So okay. it's 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 a compliment. Okay. <laughs> It's good to know. Are you doing that? Have you done that about me? About Kay? Um, maybe. I mean, I guess I'd sing your songs a little bit. I, I feel like our accents are so close. I don't have well, they to. They are. You know, we really have Mid South accents. Mm-hmm. People don't understand they're different. You know, yeah. I don't really talk. First of all, I don't speak that slow or soft, maybe. As now, South sometimes Alabama. I can get into it. I but... can too, but that's not normal. I'm really mm-hmm. kind of a Mid South girl, you know. Between, I say, you know, Bowling Green, Nashville, Birmingham, we're getting kind of North Mississippi, mm-hmm. closer to Memphis, but not so slow if, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, but not as uh, mountain. I'm not as mountain as like East Tennessee or Northeast Alabama, but certainly I'm not slow. But I think I have, I think I have the real Nashville accent, but middle class. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not from old money. If anybody would like to know, I'm not from old money. And you can somewhat tell by people's accents. Oh, yes, you, you know? can. Because over there in Bell Moon, <laughs> in Bell it's Moon. wonderful. <laughs> it's wonderful. Yeah. I like going over there and I talking got, to the people. I got a little bit of some, I got some harder R's, just not as, as hard as those people, like I said, mountain people. 
<laughs> well, that's a whole other ball of wax. That's a whole, I can't even understand some people. You know it's an issue in the South when other Southerners, sometimes you can't even understand other Southerners' accents. <laughs> Well, Linda Lang has a question, and she wants to know, would you ever consider a Scotland music tour like you do in I've already thought about it, Linda. I'm just trying to figure out how to do it. I'm not sure that the tour company that I work with in Ireland, I think they've thought about it too, but it, you know, I'm not sure that they can do it in court. They can't, they can't do it. I'm trying to figure it out. I, I would like to have a connection. And if anybody knows someone who's doing, you know, that would be interested in having me kind of be the, because I'm not the tour guide per se. I'm just the host. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why I'm in Ireland too. I just, people come and party with me. That's, You're the Vanna White. I'm, I'm the Vanna White, you know. And I would do, the, I mean, obviously I love Scotland. I'm my people, I have people from Scotland and of course Ireland too and England. So, um, and I love Scotland. I've been several times and of course, used to sing there and so i'm working on it okay but any ideas if anybody hears this would be great um uh, i would love to hear how we can i would love to take people to to scotland get in touch with us at kate campbell music on facebook or at kate campbell yeah. that's right final question of this round and this is a good one i took a little liberty with it though but it's from <laughs> from ann russ yeah, hey, Ann. She wants to know, if you were going to cook a meal for someone who wanted to know what Southern cuisine was like, what would it be? And I wanted to say, let's say it's aliens. If aliens came to Earth and wanted to know about Southern cuisine, because, you know, I think if you're in America, you might have heard about some of them in the Nashville hot chickens everywhere. But, you know, Cracker Barrel's gone west. So let's say it's aliens. Aliens. <laughs> <laughs> Well, one thing is, I know that we all need to try to be healthier, but, um, you know, I do, I think you need to have, you need to, you need to find a good biscuit. You need to have good biscuits. You need to learn how to make good biscuits and you need to have cornbread, good cornbread. Uh, personally, that's what I think, you know, and it'd be good if you can make some white gravy that's not, you know, course i i could probably tell you the entire cracker barrel menu yes <laughs> i'm ashamed to say but you know my mama when she made white gravy you know uh which is you know it's, it wasn't as thick and whatever it's different than red eye gravy but whatever to me you gotta have a good biscuit recipe and you gotta have good cornbread that's for sure i think that you still even in our nowadays we make healthier foods but I mean, obviously, the fresher you can have, you can have a really great pork. Make it, you know, but it should have some taste. You know, the thing is, you know, if you don't want to use salt, you got to come up with something else. You got to do some. You got to have some taste. I think as long as you do. I use and a lot learn, of pepper. Yeah, use pepper. You know, use some spices. You know, I was born in New Orleans. I can go hot. I mean, I don't have no problem with the, the heat. You know, but you can use some varieties. But you, you do know you had to have some taste, and but you need to be sure your gravy's good. You got to have some good gravies, white gravy and your brown gravy, and obviously you got to learn how to make chicken. But it doesn't have to be like going to you know. Kentucky fried chicken you can make it my mama didn't think that she fried chicken very well but what she did is she would put it in the skillet so she would just uh, uh, lightly flour it and then put it in the skillet and brown it that is good and then you get some white gravy and you put that on that that is good stuff you know and I think you need to have yourself a good green bean casserole Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, and again now you can make things a little healthier but still have taste that's a secret. And a good, you know, if you go to any uh, potato salad, and of course there's different, you know, opinions about that, the mustard, the mayonnaise, or whatever, but... It's you, hated. It, you know, it needs to be, yeah, it, you need to have, you need to understand uh, meat and potatoes, and then some good grains, and good casseroles. Put it all, I mean, me, I know, I'm, but see me, I can eat really bad stuff, you know. You know, my mom grew up in the 50s or whatever, but she did come from a farm, but I love myself a good casserole. So if you're going to, if you can't make a good casserole, then you're probably not that great of a Southern cook. It's Am I get, making sense? Yeah, you are. I mean, it's more coming to me as I'm talking, but, you know, and I love to get, I got some good 
cookbooks that people have given me through the years too, uh, you know, but your, your local, you know, women's clubs and stuff like that and church, but the church cookbooks I collect, if any of y'all ever come across like old church cookbooks, they're the best. They are the best. So I have a, have a pretty good, um, collection of the first Baptist church, whatever's golden anniversary cookbook. And then you get like 10 mashed potato recipes and 10 tuna casseroles and 10, Whatever. And then, of course, your pies. <laughs> Another thing I like, <laughs> if anybody wants to know, is it's hard to get ch- good chess pie. And if you don't know what it is, then you need to look it up. Chess pie. Uh-huh. C-H-E-S-S. My mother makes a chess cake. She makes it in the squares. and it, That's just as good. It is crack cocaine. Yeah, it is. It's and pure sugar. Mom, I'm putting in an order. <laughs> She's been doing Hello Dolly cookies a lot lately, but I'm really? like, let's have a return to the chess cake. Well, have her make it next time I see her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Me and you are, I will send some back to Nashville with you. She usually does. She usually know. does. Well, you need um, to save a piece for me. Well, it's getting hard to find good grits and gravy. It I is. know you well, know what I'm talking about. It's very, it's, it is hard to find good grits and gravy. It's good. To, it's hard to find good grits. And one thing about my grandfather here in Nashville, who I spent the most time with, I love dearly. He had a huge sweet tooth. Now, another thing is he smoked two packs of unfiltered Chesterfields a day. Okay. Hardcore. Hardcore. Um, <laughs> he put sugar on his grits. You know, just your regular I've grits. I've done that. Yeah. But my mom, I always had salt and pepper and butter, like just my regular grits. You know, I have to add some salt and pepper and some butter in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's what, all different What do you think ways. the aliens, well, I don't even know what the aliens taste palette is, but hopefully they'll they'll get some flavors. I would like. think they would be drawn to the South. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I have to say, we I do think. have the best food uh, as far as, you know, I mean, to me, but I like a lot of heat, like I said, I, was, I like heat, I love Hispanic food, I love I love sushi, I like, all, really, there's not anything I don't like, but I do like things to have taste, and like, the first time I went to England, and those English peas, which are served with every meal, every and meal. their potatoes, no taste, nothing against the English, but they need to add some stuff, <laughs> like it's, maybe salt and pepper. <laughs> it's really interesting. <laughs> they, they just don't get the whole potato. They have them every meal. In Ireland, too, it's like every meal we got three kinds of potatoes, which I'm all about. But we need to add some butter. <laughs> <laughs> Cheese. Cheese, butter, cream, <laughs> salt and pepper. Then then we're set to go. <laughs> that makes sense, everybody? It did make sense. Uh, I'm real hungry, y'all. I know. It's time to go eat now. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> Thank you, Hunter. Uh, I'm glad. I appreciate everybody asking questions. Oh Hope yeah, they're, they're good ones. Sense. We're having fun answering them, Please. aren't we? Oh yeah. 